Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Commodity TV here out from our studios from Munich. And with me here is yeah, a brand new company to us, Chatham Rock Phosphate and Chris Castle, the founder and managing director. And we want to talk about yeah, phosphate mining in the future out of the sea. Chris, good morning. Yes, Welcome. Good morning. It's very <laughs> nice to be here. Yeah, thanks for taking the time. And honestly, I love your tie with those uh, this white sheep. It's fantastic. <laughs> I was hoping you wouldn't notice that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your company, Rock Phosphate, Chatham Rock Phosphate, also something totally new to me. Maybe can you give us a short overview about the company? Yeah, it's a bit different, but it's one. there are a number of marine deposits around the world of rock phosphate, and this is one of the ones which is about to be developed. Mm -hmm. uh, what's exciting about it is it actually has a lower environmental footprint than mining onshore. Mm -hmm. uh, it's near to New Zealand, just offshore on a marine plateau, and we plan to mine it using a contract miner, a company called Boscalis. Mm -hmm. And so as a result of that, uh, we don't have any capital expenditure of our own. Oh, which makes our so no CapEx? No CapEx. Wow, that's very, also new to me in mining. Makes it, very, <laughs> makes it very different for a junior mining company. Yeah, definitely. Once, once we're fully permitted, we can just pay them. We just pay them per ton, per ton developed, developed, mm -hmm. uh, delivered onshore. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's... Uh, plain sailing for our shareholders. Mm -hmm. A very good return on capital as a result. Okay, fantastic. Okay, let's dive a little bit into the project. You said it already. It's uh, offshore of uh, uh, New Zealand, of course. Yeah, so you're safe jurisdiction. That's all, always perfect. But you have the mining permit already in place, and now you're working on the environmental permit. Is that correct? Yes, correct. In mm -hmm. New Zealand, you, you get the two different permits. We got the mining permit back in the end of 2013, mm -hmm. and we applied in 2015 for an environmental permit. We were turned down. Uh, basically, I think because our permit was slightly incomplete and it wasn't well explained. Mm -hmm. Since then, we've done a lot of work and we're ready to reapply. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the law has changed to make it easier for us to get a permit under, oh, that's under interesting. the new rules. Okay. Uh, because our government was quite disappointed about permits being turned down over and over again. Mm -hmm. So they've changed the rules. And um, also, encouragingly more recently, another company has just been, just been granted a permit. So we're no longer the first mover. Ah, that's okay. Yeah. okay. That's so, important. Fantastic. Yeah, so you can follow a little bit and build on that, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's it's not a precedent for us, but it means that the decision making people are not making. They're not the first to make the decision to let it go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, super. So that's exciting. You've done already also some, let's I would call it economic assessment, of course. Can you maybe refer on some numbers for us? Yeah, maybe let's say what is the mine life? Uh, what yeah profits before taxes you expect? Things like that. Okay, well the the deposit itself is twenty three point four million tons, with about mm -hmm. another twelve million which can be added with a bit more sampling. Mm -hmm. That gives a mine life of between fifteen and twenty years, mining mm -hmm. at a rate of one and a half million tons a year. Mm -hmm. Uh, for each for each ton that we mine, we, the difference between the contract price of mining it and what we sell it for is based on on, on current market about fifty dollars a ton. So we'll make that's US dollars. Mm -hmm. So we'll make roughly seventy five million dollars a ton gross margin. Mm -hmm. Our operating costs are very low, obviously, because we don't actually operate the project. We just have a, a head office. So my role as as uh, CEO will be telling our investors how how much money we're making each week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but there won't be much more to do. We're, yeah. we're in a room here now of about 20 feet square. Our yeah. office that's, is that size back in New Zealand and will be about the same. We won't have a team of people doing mm -hmm. things. Now, of course, I mean, if you have contract mining, they do everything. You only have to supervise. Absolutely. And make sure that the tonnage is right and everything works. Absolutely. We'll have yeah. a contracts, a contracts mm -hmm. uh, manager and we'll have a, a marketing manager. Mm -hmm. And then there'll be me and there'll be somebody on the front desk and that'll be pretty much it. It'll exactly. Be a very simple operation. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. What do you think might be the projected starting time for the production? Uh, in, at the, the end of 2021. And the mm -hmm. reason for that is it's going to take another two and a half years to get our permit, environmental permit. Mm -hmm. That's just the process. That's how long it takes in New Zealand. And mm -hmm. then it takes two years for well, Scalas to modify vessels so that they can go mining. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at the late into 21, early 22. Mm -hmm. But at okay. that point, uh, the, the phosphate markets might be better than they are now. Mm -hmm. And we already make serious money now. Mm -hmm. it, it's, um, in 2022, I think the world will be quite different. Oh, that, uh, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, for example, our rock is extremely low in cadmium, which yeah. is a contaminant that is becoming increasingly worried about around the world. Absolutely. It's yeah. being legislated against here in Europe, and it will mm -hmm. be those controls will be more and more stringent. Mm -hmm. Our rock is, has among the lowest cadmium levels of any rock in the world. Mm -hmm. so it's going to be, it could be priced at a premium. We're not assuming that, but it could be. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, maybe can you give us a short idea about the vessel you are using? Because I this is something also to me totally new. I mean, how, how, how do I have to imagine that? It's a vessel like 200 meters long and they have a, a special digger and you dig out the rock directly from the ground or how, how does that work? Oh, it's, it's a very interesting process. What we're using is, is, a, is, a, is a, a dredging vessel, one, mm -hmm. one of many owned by Royal Boscalis. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a, a number in their fleet and will be modified so that it can, can operate in greater depths because our deposit's at 400 meters under the sea surface, mm -hmm. but it's on the surface of the sea floor. And so it's vacuumed up. It's not dug at all. It's not a digging process. It's yeah. a vacuuming process. Okay. So it basically, it's, it's, it's a large commercial vacuum cleaner, mm -hmm. huge one, which actually sucks up the surface of the seafloor, brings it up onto the ship, separates out the phosphate, mm -hmm. and returns the fines down to the seafloor, mm -hmm. along with filtered water. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a very straightforward process, and it's something that they do now all, all around the world, but at shallower depths when they're dredging uh, sand and so on for construction purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, Boscalis have been doing that for over 100 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, fantastic. Let's come to, yeah, let's say some money affairs, of course. Oh. Uh, let's say what is money now in the bank, and what do you need to finish your environmental permit? We have roughly a half a million dollars in the bank at the moment. We need mm -hmm. to raise another six million for mm -hmm. the environmental permitting process and for overheads during that period. Mm -hmm. And now I'm in the process of raising that now here in Europe and um, in the next couple of weeks in Canada. Mm -hmm. We've had uh, significant interest from uh, f from brokers in Canada and Vancouver. And although $6 million sounds a lot, it's not. We've raised $38 million for this project already mm -hmm. over the last seven years, mm -hmm. including going back to our shareholders seven times. So they've subscribed to rights issues and share purchase plans because yeah. they believe in the project, and they're all long-term holders. Mm -hmm. We have about 1,500 shareholders. Mm -hmm. Our cornerstone shareholders are based in Singapore, Germany um, and uh, in, in the USA. Mm -hmm. And the institutions? Uh, yes, uh, two, uh, two in Baltimore and one in mm -hmm. London mm -hmm. uh, at the moment, but that's a, that's a target market for us. Mm -hmm. It's mostly high net worth individuals who've come mm -hmm. in. Okay. What is management share? Uh, about 9%. We're no, the, we're, okay. we're the uh, third largest shareholder. Okay, yeah, that's important to know. So, so you have skin so. in the game. Uh, very much so. <laughs> I, I, Great. And I get paid very little. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> okay, perfect. No, that sounds fantastic to me. Yeah. Um, one last question for the environmental permit. Uh, a permit, as I know always, it's not easy sometimes to get it. There are hurdles. You said the law has changed. Um, let's say... Is the process like really that standardized that you really can jump over the hurdles in a normal matter of way? Yes, it's it's very it's very standardized and very transparent in New Zealand. You basically put together an application. Mm -hmm. It's then uh, and you and, and then other parties make submissions on it. Mm -hmm. It's then uh, held in front of a board of inquiry. People present evidence. It's all transparent. It's all online. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's just a matter of satisfying the test of the act. The relevant act is the EZ Act 19, uh, 2013. Mm -hmm. And if they, if you just if you satisfy the balance between economic benefit and environmental damage, yeah. that's that's the hurdle. Okay. And and we obviously have strong economic benefits, mm -hmm. and the environmental damage is relatively small. We're exactly. damaging a quarter of one percent of that particular part of our seafloor. Okay, I think that's that's makeable. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> I think it's a pretty good balance. Yeah. Okay, super. Well, Chris, that was great. Final well, thank, thank you very much for that, and all the pleasure. best. And uh, wish you yeah all the best, of course, uh, to, for the race of the six million. I'm pretty sure you do that because you did it in the past. So yeah. why shouldn't you do it now? Uh, and uh, want to see you soon then for an update. Uh, absolutely. I look forward to, to updating you. Thank you very Thank much. Bye-bye. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, there was Chris Castle, the founder and managing director of Chatham Rock Phosphate. And you heard that uh, the company is uh, doing yeah sea mining for the future for phosphate, for rock phosphate. And uh, yeah, I think pretty interesting company. I just want to uh, tell you on, on, on notice, of course, the company is quite small, below $10 million market cap. So please be advised. And uh, yeah, have a look at the company. I think it's quite interesting. And the economics, uh, yeah, might will be really strong for the future. Also, what I like is uh, they will now have any capex because it will be contract mining. So that's quite new for, for a mining company, uh, actually. And yeah, check out the company. Thanks for watching us. Bye-bye from Munich.